Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome to our second day. And uh, Dr. Ludmilla Smirnova, who's going to be speaking. I see we've got how many guests? Who are all those guests? One, two. Did you invite people, Ludmilla? I see. I see a lot of people are here, so we're we're going to have a surprise. I don't know who they are. In any case, um, great that you've joined. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and how you're doing, if you're okay, if you're enjoying uh, the sessions, if you're tired, if you're happy, if you're whatever. All right, and I see, Shelly, you didn't have the link. Sorry about that. Um, I'll share it with you in a minute. Ludmilla and I uh, met in the chat box. I know that sounds weird. And uh, we've been pre presenting face to face. We met face to face in 2010. And we've been presenting since 2010 face to face at various conferences and doing workshops. We meet at least once a year. I think it's, it's, it's um, something that we're going to continue doing, maybe even more. Um, starting next year, hopefully, I'll be uh, more available for traveling. And uh, some of you mentioned the chat box on WizIQ. Well, that's the power of the chat. And you know how much I love to chat. Uh, so that's one of the, how we met, actually. Um, Ludmilla was giving a session and I was chatting away. And um, oh. <laughs> we've been together ever since. So uh, it's really nice to be a colleague and friend from someone that you meet online. Yes, I'll share that with you, Shelley. I want to apologize, uh, Ludmilla. I'm sorry it's in your session. I wanted to do it in Shelley's session, but uh, she was speaking so quickly I couldn't, I couldn't stop her. <laughs> um, I want to apologize uh, to everyone uh, for the past couple of conferences. I've been coming in as the person who was presenting. Instead of coming in as Nellie, I was forced to come in as one of the presenters until WizIQ came up with a co-presenter link, which happened um, just um, about two, three weeks ago. So now there's the co-presenter and I don't have to come in. And the reason I came in as a presenter is because there was no way I could come in uh, into the class. And uh, this has upset a few people. And I want to apologize. I had no intention of taking anybody's um, identity. I'm not that kind of person. So there was no malicious uh, act on my part. I just had no choice. So that's why it worked that way. Um, so Tom couldn't get away. <laughs> so um, I apologize. I apologize to Shelly publicly for um, speaking as her, even though I kept saying in, in the co connecting online and in the, in the uh, Moodle MOOCs that we've had for the past couple of months, and it's been more than a month, that I'm writing in pink, or I'm writing, Nelly is writing in green, but it wasn't because I was being um, bad, okay? I didn't have, I just had no choice. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get into the session. So it's, uh, it was a technical thing, and um, I want to thank Shelly because um, I, asked was IQ if I can come in as a co-presenter and still be in the class that I created. And the answer was yes. And that's why uh, I was able to do that in uh, one of the sessions um, early on today. And uh, that was a session that uh, Shelley's was IQ uh, crashed. So I apologize for that too. So I take everything on myself and, um, and that's fine. So if you got any complaints, um, I'm the person. So thank you, Ludmilla, for bearing with me. And thank you, Shelley. And I apologize to everyone that I hurt in any way. So that's that. Um, Ludmilla, I'm going to let you continue and I'll go off the podium. Thank you.
Thank you, Nelly. Uh, if, you, if you hear me, please uh, show me smiley face. And uh, Nelly, uh, I really would like to applaud to you, to your um, uh, never, st never stopping uh, and never, never uh, stopping creating some very interesting ideas and share and engage people in this wonderful event and uh, what a great idea uh blogging festival spring that's what spring is about it's about new things it's about a new interaction new communication new connections and it's a pleasure it's an honor to participate in this great event and uh and nelly uh, nelly is always uh, on top of things i don't know when she sleeps and uh, that's why I don't think you need to apologize because I remember when I was in every session I was able to participate, I saw how you were writing. I'm in green. And because I'm probably used to you being always there for supporting the presenters, so I kind of thought that it was okay, it was normal. Um, but uh, we are different, and I also uh, applaud you for being so um, uh, hum hum um, humble and so um, so uh, conscientious and so sensitive that you apologize. That's again a loss to you. Anyway, um, so when Nelly invited me to participate in this event i immediately thought yeah um, about to speak blogging. to yeah you need to speak to that because i think are you on a mac uh, ludmilla really, by any um, chance blogging, you I need to go into your mac hard. settings yeah uh, it happens to me all the time you need to go to your mac settings every time you turn off your mac it goes very low yeah go to your mac settings and uh just make it go as high as you can or speak into the yeah but uh and i know but the macs always go down if you know you turn them off and on okay yeah in the past they were using journals a reflective journals and i think wow is a great and being a reflective practitioner is a, a great resource for thinking, for developing uh, professionalism, and that's why uh, that's why I oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, let's check. So, do you hear me well? Uh, Somebody is writing that you can hardly. Do you hear me? Uh, please, if you hear me, all right, all right, all right. Uh, do I need to uh, make it? Uh, Maybe Boris knows why we have so many guests. One, two, three, four, five guests, Ludmilla. Yeah. Did you turn yes, on I five am. different? Maybe you went into, you have five different classes open or something? I, uh, okay, I'm, okay, is it, is it, okay, is it better? Yeah, it's it's be better. I am on my son's computer, so that's why. Uh, I would just okay. uh, raise it, the uh, volume in the uh, settings uh, for okay. the Mac. Oh, my, that my usually son works. Has a cool microphone. Look at that. <laughs> it's cool. No, it's still low. Okay, Boris will set it up. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me continue while he's setting up my microphone. No, I don't think so. And I'm no. just good. To tell you all no. that I am visiting my son with my three grandchildren. So I just you'll have to speak right into it. <laughs> and uh, okay, so he's adjusting. I have to I have to start it up. Oh, Boris, can you um, raise the volume on the settings for the I Mac? No, uh, I, I think. Do you hear? Do you hear me? No, I. No, no, it's fine. You look great, and. Okay. 
I hear Bor Boris louder than you. Maybe you don't need a mic. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hear me? We hear you, Boris. Yes. Speak again. Yes. Yeah. Shall I uh, log on, log off, and come back? No. Okay. Uh, so, is it better? Is it better? Is it better? <laughs> uh, raise the. Okay. Uh, where is the VDA Q volume? Uh... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am. I using he headphones. No, no, it's okay, is Ludmilla. It, it's it not echoing. You, we're better? fine because we're both on Macs. It's fine. Is it better now? Does it have microphone? Is it microphone? No. Is it? Well, maybe I should change. Uh, you could try. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's in it's in microphone instead of here, not uh, well I you I use the really okay how about now? Is it better now? Is it better now? developing students critical skills and reflective skills. And students it's not about technology, it's not about using Jack to point out tools or anything. It's about engaging students in uh, communication with a bigger audience. It's, it's uh, writing publishing for um, for sharing their insights and um, discussing how Well, she wanted me to use the uh, headphone. Is it better now? Uh, so, and I remember when I was visiting Kelly. Okay. All right. So, um, right. Uh, so, what I I I would like just a few uh, slides about um, blog or not to blog and what is blog. And I think everybody who is in this session and by today, I everybody probably discussed. And so, what is blogging for you? Just write in in the chat box. What is blogging for you? And um, why? using blogs. Um, as far as me is concerned, so I use blogging for uh, developing students critiquing skills and, and reflective skills. And students, it's not about technology. It's not about using Web 2.0 uh, tools or anything. It's about engaging students in uh, communication with a bigger audience. It's, it's uh, writing purposely for um, for sharing their insights and um, discussing uh, with um, the peers and uh, so and I remember when I was visiting uh, Shelley's session she was uh, actually pointing out about these features of um, of blogging that it is a formal web website. It is um, it's updated very often, and articles appears appears in reverse chronological order, frequently crawled by search engines, and it covers a wider variety of articles, and it's easy to set up, and that's what I usually tell my students in the beginning of any of my courses. So why blogging to reflect, and um, because. Uh, many now, I think, is in every field, uh, many specialists, professionals use their blogging. And this is probably, this is infographic I used um, recently, but I think the, the number of blogs is much, uh, much bigger. Um, so, and so why blogging? Blogging provides students with a bigger audience, global audience, engage them in conversation. Uh, you can uh, students can meet with uh, specialists, professionals, uh, and it really develops uh, critical thinking skills, and uh, it's really uh, a wonderful, a wonderful way of engaging students in active learning. And these are uh, that's what I usually suggest my students to use. 
uh, black blog platforms. And I think the, the audience of this conference really shares their blogs and we, we all saw, and I all, myself tried all of these um, uh, platforms, EduBlogs, Blogger and WordPress. And right now I'm teaching a course literacy and technology and out of uh, nine students, um, all of them are using Blogger and only one student is using WordPress. Um, so, but it's okay. It's, it's interesting for students to, to give them a chance to, uh, to, to make choices. To, it's all about choices. And uh, so also uh, we discussed with the class, usually again in the beginning, that uh, the blogs exist for blogs exist for different purposes. Uh, it can be a diary. It can be just uh, a micro uh, blogging. It might be um, using Twitter, Flirk, and or Tumblr, um, and different genres. And it it's, uh, can be used for personal uh, growth, for personal needs, uh, family blog. It can be political, social, um, educational blogs, um, and uh, students can use different media. Um, and they can be blogs, and I usually use blog in the end of the semester. Uh, when students, throughout the semester, they write their reflective blogs, and in the end, I ask them to summarize all they experienced in class and um, create a vlog and a video blog. And these are other blogs um, that uh, exist in, in, the, in, in the field of blogging. Um, Scratch or photo blog, Tumble blogs, link blogs, and mob blogs. Uh, I think Nelly was mentioning uh, um, about mobile blogs. You can use, you can write your uh, entries using, using your mobile. Uh, devices and of course blog sphere a uh, blog sphere uh, is very uh, useful and uh, I use in my blog I create I create uh, I add all blogs in my blog so that uh, I would be always checking with my students and so blogging are not about the tools. Blogging is about the skills. And um, um, in Len Beaches, um, the blogger, famous blogger, uh, she uh, meant all the skills. And you can see what skills uh, students develop when they blog. It's all about collaboration, it's presentations, uh, it's media literacy. Uh, typing skills students develop, networking, publishing skills, digital citizenship uh, skills. It's, it's blogging, it's amazing. So, but we are focusing on a reflective skills. So, naturally, there is a question. So, what is a reflection? It, and uh, the question, the um, so what what is reflection for you? Please write uh, write in the box. So what is what is reflection? What is reflection for you? Do we have people here? Reflection. What is reflection for you? And it's interesting, reviewing the past with an eye uh, towards the future, Melanie wrote uh, a second look, mirror, writing how to feel about a happening, responding, very good looking, inward refer than outward, very interesting, Robert, um, and look out. Sometimes learning to your inner self. That's wonderful. Very interesting. Learning about yourself. I love all this. 
Yeah. Um, so reflection is, as, it, as um, a dictionary says, it's a form of personal response, that's what you wrote, to experiences, situations, events, or new information. And it's a processing phase where thinking and learning take place. And it's interesting, sometimes I ask students, sometimes when I see students say, oh, I didn't like this, I didn't like that, I usually um, ask them uh, speak about what was happening uh, during the class and focus on really on learning on the event right focusing on the event focusing on what was happening and what you were learning from what was happening um, and the uh, it was interesting it's interesting that um, and reflecting is practice in which writer describes a real or imaginary scene, event, intuition, passing uh, thought, personal thoughts, feelings, and insights. And I usually ask students, don't describe me things. It's, uh, it's not enough if you just describe things. Uh, I would like you to go behind and think why it was happening. And why, why you were assigned that reading, or why the class was uh, held that way, uh, and what you learned from that experience. Um, and it's, um, again, reflection, and uh, speaking about reflection, it's not a new thing. Uh, if we refer to um, John Dewey, he was saying, we don't learn from experience we learn from reflecting on it and so he wrote about this almost well a century ago uh, and um, so Nelly also wrote observing the event without criticizing yourself or others you don't get much by blaming yourself or the others I, I really that's a great uh, thought and that's also I convey to my students so think about the learning spirit in any situation. Um, and so this was this, uh, we learned from reflecting on experience. And it's interesting that um, um, Christopher, uh, Peter Pappas, Pappas um, created this taxonomy of reflection. And uh, so he, uh, he designed, I think, Based on Bloom's taxonomy, he created, I think, a more in, 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 important um, view, insight on reflection. And uh, that's what I use usually in my class. I tell students, first you, you really remember what you did or what you read. And then you it, don't stop there because it's not enough. It's just description. It's low level. Because if you, you describe the lesson that I designed, I know what was happening because I designed that lesson. I want you to see why. Go higher. And then you go to understanding what important about it. What is important about it? And then even higher, how could you use this, what you learned, what you read, again? And even there you don't stop. You think and you think higher and reflect. Do I see any patterns in what I did or what I read? And then how well you did or you or somebody else did, uh, there. And what should you do next? How what you read or how what you uh, participated in you can use in future situations. I really love this um, a blog of Peter Pappas and if you go and online and you you find this blog uh, taxonomy of reflection of Peter Pappas you you will see a, a wonderful um, and he also has a wonderful presentation about reflecting a uh, reflective um, way of um, blogging and uh, I also like this work of Bookfield where he says that Always, when you start reflecting, whether it is reflective thinking, and of course it starts with thinking first, before you write something, you still first think. 
you are in the center you start with yourself and you in that event you what you know what you know about what you are going to write then you revisit the readings and then or if you write about experiences revisit that experience and then show you the values share your beliefs share your attitude towards that event or reading and then solve problems and justify actions explain yourself providing some evidence providing some uh, go deeper and uh, think about changes how what you learn how what you read can change you for the better for the better environment for a better you and uh, the that would be really highest level of reflection and um, these these tips I usually um, share with my students when they start blogging and to, to begin with uh, I always they are always amazed so they all use our uh, our college is using a G, uh, gmail accounts and all students have gmail accounts and I usually tell them uh, um, when you start blogging, they don't know, they don't know that they they own this, they own Blogger because they have Gmail account, Google account, and um, so and so see they go to uh, I want them to go to their Blogger and to to their and they open the blog and I guide them through the steps how to open the blog, and then I ask please write your come up with the titles that reflect the content that you are learning and they reflect you who you are so think about some catchy um, catchy title of your blog hello Helena welcome and uh, of course I that's why I use blogger because it's easy it's right in there in their gmail account and so then if it is a school a student asks to have permissions from their parents and they we also discuss the online safety and there are a lot of articles about that and that was I think um, um, I teach a lot of courses different courses I teach psychology of learning I teach methods of teaching of different subjects and lately I'm teaching um, social studies methods how to teach social methods I teach teaching with technology and teaching um, literacy and technology and I also teach nature of school and society how they are combined in all my courses students write blogs and um, Oh, just quickly um, that's these I, I try to enlighten them choose unique catchy name to your blogs because the, the when they think about it it's really it's a quintessence of their personality it's a quintessence of high order of thinking uh, about the subject that they are learning and it reflects their personality and I also ask them to keep their entries short informative and um, use uh, use um, keep in mind the form of essay they always have to have an introduction they have to have uh, content in the middle and always have some kind of wrapping up closure where they uh, summarize everything that they were discussing in their blog um, and so they also I uh, also teach them to use Grammarly I hope you all know about Grammarly uh, website that helps to keep their grammar correct correct grammar Oops. I, um, if, if somebody can help me uh, with with this Grammarly.com. It's it's a great website that first of all also helps to um, 
to check for plagiarism and also keeps grammar and style correct, grammar and, and style, and students know about from the very beginning. Uh, and so also, yes, um, it was free. Um, give students some freedom to explore uh, explore the blogs. And I don't um, I don't check on the blogs in the beginning. I give them freedom to write what they feel like and I provide samples for students. And um, so we will speak about grading. Uh, it's also important because it depends on the course, but if you teach students to um, to reflect and if you teach students to um, to be open so yes you have to minimize grading um, and also it, it's great to challenge students with with some uh, activities with projects some games to inspire their reflective writing uh, and give more time to fall in love with blogging to reflect and um, I should I, I should that really in my situation by the end of um, by the end of the semester in all my courses students enjoy blogging it, it becomes their second nature and uh, and um, I also uh, I also require students and I tell them in the beginning that, that blogs are designed for a conversation so you will always have to um, you always have to read other blogs and blogs are written for being read so that's why uh, we speak and discuss how to comment I love this blog of uh, mrs. mrs. Salish self um, yeah selfish uh, selfish so she created this uh, graphic about uh, comments and so she discusses with students and that's what I usually do with my students and I I, pre I de uh, decided to share this blog of um, the teacher so she's I think she's fourth grade teacher and so she, in order to engage students in writing so she created uh, this picture and um, students were um, busy with some project and she posted and she posted this picture online and so she engaged other people to to write about it uh, and so she got I think around 40 uh, comments and that engaged her students in blogging they they really saw uh, saw the meaning uh, meaning meaning of blogging and being connected to other people uh, so great or not to grade so I usually, because these courses are uh, the courses I teach, they teach students uh, critical thinking, they teach students uh, show literacy skills, and uh, so I have several rubrics. This is one of the rubrics that is mostly um, focus focuses on content. If, if is the content thoughtful? developed, useful, related to course topics and reading. Uh, interactive is, is the entry of the blog engaging, causes discussion and participating in larger community by responding and commenting on their classmates' blog. Uh, style post shows your voice and creative approach and effectively uses hyperlinks, embedded videos and pictures and frequency at least two posts on time and one comment per week so I think when you teach students to blog uh, and you teach students to uh, write uh, effective blogs so I think we need we need uh, some kind of guidance and this uh, this is particularly this particularly uh, scoring guide really helps to develop students um, writing, uh, and this is another uh, version of uh, my my rubric for my classes, and it, it requires it requires um, blog structure and design in one criteria, 
So I expect that each blog has a catchy title, reflective. It's not just week one blog, week two blog. So that's how students usually start. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of work. I, I agree, uh, Nelly, but it, uh, it teaches students to become really reflective. Because I tell them, and this also helps in the future because they will be writing lessons and coming up with interesting titles. Uh, and so then the author, uh, if the author demonstrates skills using the appropriate combination of color or text and background, so it, it's designed. So it's important for them to know that if people are reading, they, they have to be mindful of other people's when they read. And I want them to use blogs, uh, and because it's blog, it's uh, using a web, so it, it shouldn't be dead, dead entry. I call dead entry when they just provide the, the text. Because it's a blog or web blog, it's on the web, it should use all multimedia if possible. And the blog entry signed topics, so if they really created uh, blogs on the topics of the course. And the last criteria, if if the blogger uses comments uh, from other peers, so it's very important. And if they interact and how they, when they reflect on other people's blogs, it shouldn't be, oh, I like, I agree with you, I disagree with you. It's just, oh, I like this blog. That's not enough. They have to go deeper and they have to share, they have to ask questions in order to uh, keep conversation going. And um, yeah, so now I think it's the time um, to discuss I, and share it, my you, experience. It, because I'm in as a co-presenter, Ludmilla. I'm not in I as a... Uh, so how to motivate students to blog. So I don't see anything in your and media I, um, player. I found this interesting uh, challenge and I challenge my students this this year to write uh, every Oh, do you mean here it's this a, one? It's a challenge for Oh, I see what you mean. The we can copy it. Blog oh, wait, let me copy and add it to um, okay, there. I, I don't know. Right is here. it Let me let me try. Oh, okay, here it is. Content. Is it okay uh, now? It's a great, Tell me if this is it. Um, challenge Okay. And my students right. accepted. Do you want me to play it? this challenge. Um, and if I think I have also, I would like you to view this uh, video. Uh, what is it? Our um, media. I think it is it. Oh, all right. Uh, so. Uh, <coughs> Um, Nelly, I want to like. I would like to. It, it doesn't. I don't think it allows me to. <coughs> I wanted to. Oh. Um, I clicked. I clicked. Uh, what did I click on? I clicked on something, but it doesn't allow me to insert the link to. Uh, yeah. So I used to teach fourth grade in Rhode Island. Um, what happened? What, what, what happened now? I don't know. Oh, yeah. This is it. Yeah. Um, but not this, all. Yeah. Where I am now? Oh. Boys and girls, this is Mrs. Shu. Um, I am Hi. 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 There's a lot of you. There's a lot. We have about 90 kids in here right now. Okay, great. And boys and girls, this is Mrs. Schubert. Hi. Wow, so good to see all of you. There's a lot of you. There's a lot. We have about 90 kids in here right now. Okay, great. And um, 
we will let you go ahead and get started. I told them a little bit about what the Slice of Life Challenge is, but we'll okay. let you kind of get started and then maybe they can ask a few questions. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so I used to teach fourth grade in Rhode Island. Um, and I had a class of students who liked writing but didn't love writing. And there were a few kids who enjoyed writing and would write in their writer's notebooks every day, but not all of them would. And I wanted to do something that would challenge all of them to write more. So what I did is I proposed a challenge to them. This was back in 2008. And I said, we are going to write about a little piece of our day every day and we're gonna do it for the entire month of March. And I encourage them to write about little pieces of their life, just tiny things that they would make more out of, small moments, if you will. Um, and it all started with a student, and I got the idea from a student of mine who had written about um, spending his entire afternoon helping his little sister find her necklace. And they were looking under couches, they were looking um, in every crevice of the house to find her necklace and after probably about an hour it landed up being around her neck and he was so frustrated with her. He was like, how ridiculous is it that we spent all this time looking for a piece of jewelry that was on her body? So um, I kind of thought, well wouldn't it be cool if we can just make more out of these little moments of our daily lives and write about them? And that's exactly what my students did back in 2008. And it was a really successful experience and it got them to get more interested in writing about their own lives and realizing that the stories that they had to tell about their own lives mattered and were worth writing down. That same year, um, my co-blogger Ruth Ayers and I proposed a challenge to teachers to do the exact same thing, to write about a tiny little piece of their lives every single day um, to put it on a blog and to share it with other people. And in the beginning, it was very, very small. There were probably under 20 people who did it the first year in 2008. We're on our sixth year coming up this coming March, starting on March 1st. And I anticipate that we're going to have probably about 200 teachers who are going to engage. I think, I think you can watch this video uh, later on your own. Um, and um, and I I really um, it's a, a great challenge and there are several challenges by the way um, so uh, teachers engaged um, bloggers to reflect every day and this is uh, in March it's already what 15th or 16th day uh, of challenge. And there is a, we, uh, I chose with my class, I chose individual Tuesday slice of life challenge. Um, uh, on Tuesday, my students are writing, writing their blogs, uh, reflections, and I absolutely love it. And some of them started, uh, started writing poetry. Uh, some uh, students shared their, their a day with their daughter who is going to a prom. Another was um, writing about frustration and excitement at the same time because of and it, it's uh, it's absolutely um, wonderful and I really enjoy this slice of life challenge and this helped me again engage students in reflective writing. Um, uh, so these again and uh, they they are so creative. This uh, there are more than. Uh, more than um, if you go to uh, on Twitter and you will see you can if you look for this uh, slice of life 14 um, hashtag you can see and read uh, stories and participants who participate in this um, slice of life challenge and my students are also there um, so it's it's really uh, enjoyable and it's a challenge that helps engage students in reflective writing. Um, so this this is example of reflective titles of uh, of the blogs from my class. Learning never ends. The truth is in the fact. Uh, I want to blog. This is one of my students who had hard time 
to create the blog she was using blogger or either she started using wordpress or edu blogs and she couldn't just make it she <laughs> she was trying she was writing in google docs her entries and she couldn't make the uh, she couldn't make the blogs work so that's why she called her blog i want to blog <laughs> because she couldn't make it work uh, this is two t t cubed uh, technology teaching teachers you see three times t that's how the teacher called her blog creating a bright future one click at a time another blog my journey through literacy and technology literacy technology and me history gossip well let's talk a, con uh, a concept change so these are um, reflective titles and there are many more many more roads um, so because I think that's really the the and then also I require to write reflective titles to their blog entries because again the title of the blog entry is a quintessence it's a high level again thinking uh, of what the whole entry would require. It's a reflective thinking. It really brings students to high level of critical thinking and creative thinking. So these are examples of um, uh, these are examples of blogs, and this is what I students are using uh, Wordle to again to start to start the blog entry. They use pictures and a different word uh, font style. I, my grandchildren and I can walk. Um, so multimedia. So they use pictures from the classes. They use this is a study, by the way this is a video that students in the, uh, incorporated in the book in writing a book. Uh, students make discoveries, sharing discoveries. I love this blog entry because uh, that's what happens. Uh, my course is usually in the uh, in the end of the program and when they come to my class uh, I suddenly discover myself that they were taught only use direct instruction and when they come to my class I push them create very engaging lessons and that's what students wrote today my fieldwork group met with our teacher for the first time to discuss our fieldwork planning going to meeting I thought we were golden we created a presentation that was engaging, colorful, organizing neatly. Although our presentation was good, we were urged to think outside of the box and adjust some of our ideas. Of course, it was a little disappointing to find out our presentation was not that best. But hey, we learned from our mistakes and they are bound uh, to happen. The hardest part of me during the meeting was that I had to force myself to unlearn material I had already learned it is confusing I know but I now say I'm totally on board the inquiry is important so it's um it's interesting if you remember the title uh, not the title the quote from futurist Alan Coughlin who said education today is literate people are not that uh, cannot cannot read or write. These are people who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So this girl, as if she knew this quote, she wrote, she read that I had to unlearn material and had already learned and um, teach herself, uh, and learn something new, and uh, start with a new idea. So they they discovered that inquiry is a really um, uh, makes and they make these discoveries that inquiry is it's harder to create but the result is really encouraging and uh, wonderful one see this how students are engaged in either treasure hunt or web quest or the Nelly will be teaching about web quest it's great so students students are also sharing their insights their discoveries so this is one of the blogs I want to blog and the student was writing that she came to this class with no idea what uh, digital learners are about and uh, what the new what the teachers the students will be like when she's graduating from the college 
and she said that she was pushed to use some of the tools that she wouldn't uh, she wouldn't have been using otherwise. So um, these are insights, and students are um, still sharing these um, insights in the blog that I, I made some some of the um, uh, wonderful um, sharing um, posts that they say uh, what they recommend their thinking. And, and they, they really, uh, they reflect, they reflect on their own learning, they reflect on the uh, learning of others, and they give, you see this, one of the students give a recommendation for the other schools. Not only has this project made me have a newfound appreciation for people behind scenes of movie making, it, we were using project uh, where students uh, creating in the class, it's a social methods class, and they were doing these work projects. And uh, so they in, in class, the whole semester, they created companies and students, uh, students' pupils from the school, it was fourth grade students, they were creating movies and they were living through these, this world. They, they were, they had money, this, this box, and they were creating um, movies and then they did commercials they did and they were paying they were selling they were making pitches uh, to uh, venture capitalists and it was quite an adventure and then that's why it really get, this was a project and it gave them food for reflective thinking so, uh, here this again showing sharing their ideas and sharing their achievements. So they, uh, this is one in share achievements. One of the students, I think he is, where is she? She is um, one of the students, uh, Sarah, or maybe she's making a, a picture. So Sarah, Sarah's at Social Studies Adventures. She, um, students were assigned to create, um, to create, um, uh, a trailer. So they were reading a book and they were assigned to create a trailer. And I gave them different tools. I said, you can use a voice thread, you can use any model, you can use screencast matic you can use uh, Movie Maker, iMovie. And this student, for the first time, she was using any model. And then uh, she participated in my uh, literacy conference. And she was so proud to share her learning that she just learned in my class. She was sharing with the teachers. These are the teachers who came to my literacy conference, um, literacy conference um, during the during April last week, uh, last uh, year. And this is a these are people who were in my session. And so she was very proud of her achievements. And that's what. Her, this blog is about. So, um, and so learning outcomes. In the end, students uh, write uh, what they've learned throughout the semester, and they sometimes they are writing what they learned and their final thoughts. Um, and so these are the time uh, to think and look back on past field work and what they think about what they learned throughout the semester, throughout learning experience. And so she writes uh, truthfully and sincerely that there has been ups and downs for me. I feel that I successfully completed all the required assignments and discussion forums to my best ability. I believe this class helped shape me into the kind of teacher I plan to become. So uh, that's, I think it's, it's very rewarding. When I read last blogs, I really, um, so these are links. Uh, Ludmilla? In the uh, blog, um, in the are you still, presentation. Um, on everything the okay? You can click on the links and see all those. And um, so lately I told you that I use what do you mean? Uh, students' uh, final blogs. They write, they create using oh, okay. uh, different tools. Uh, this uh, this was created with um, oh, with sorry. present me, and I think I have the link, but I think we don't have time. So uh, again, there is a link on 
and this this one also liberating spirits with web 2.0 this was created with screencast matic as you see and then published on um, on the web uh, on YouTube one of the students and these are blogs that I um, follow myself and um, so Vicky Davis uh, Beth Ray um, and uh, Thank you. Donald, Thank you, Lidnilla. Thank you for sharing are, um, real life uh, situations uh, for future teachers. And I think that's really important because uh, that's what it's about. It's about future teachers. And I see someone extending the class. So, Ludmilla, I'm going to go into my session and I'd like to thank you. I'm going to stop recording this through Camtasia.